Hey, I'm Jake. I'm an indie game developer currently working on my dream game, Jumbo and Chuck. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware that we're missing something pretty important in these devlogs, and that's Chuck. So today we're gonna solve this problem and I'm gonna show you how I go about my creation process, taking it from the concept art all the way to bringing the 3D model into Unity and adding in its shader. But before we get any farther in this video, go and smash that like button and also subscribe. We're trying to get to 5,000 subs and we're so close. So if you could just hit that subscribe button, we're gonna get there hopefully by the end of the month. Now Chuck has been designed for a long time and I have a bunch of concepts of how I want him to look, but I thought it would be worth sharing as an indie game developer that you shouldn't really get too stuck into one design for a character and think that you can't break free from that mold. And the main reason I bring this up is because I actually ran into some problems and I had to change Chuck's design. So I came up with this quick sketch and I basically just rounded out his torso quite a bit. His head stayed relatively the same, but the eyes will no longer go over his hat and instead they will just be like flat on his face. So I started up Blender and I entered sculpting mode with a reference image that I had created earlier. And I use this image generally as a guideline when sculpting and nothing more. You don't wanna get too stuck into using orthographic views because you wanna be constantly moving around the model to make sure that it works well in 3D space. So I start sculpting with a lower resolution just to get the main ideas out, basically just like a rough draft. So for Chuck, I first made quick work of defining where I wanted his cheeks, nose, and ears, and then I flattened out an area where I was gonna eventually put in his eyes. I then can pull out the chin and enter into the smoothing phase. Now the smoothing phase is just where you add in a bunch of geometry. Um, it basically smooths everything out so that you can work with it a little bit better be, instead of pulling all these little points. And it just helps you get an overall better shape when you do this. So with the smoothed up geometry, I went to create a more defined nose. So I believe that the eyes and nose of Chuck will be basically where people are gonna be looking at him the most when they look at his face. So it's really important to nail this point down. But after following the nose's shape and getting roughly where I want everything to be, I then start to define and flatten out the ear. Now for future models, I don't think I'm gonna do it the way that I did it for Chuck. I had a lot of trouble maneuvering the points and getting an ear to look right. And I think it would be a lot easier if I had just brought in a separate object of the ear and just kind of like put it in there. So for future reference, I think that that's probably the way that I'm gonna go, but it worked out well enough for this model and we'll just have to see how it goes in the retopology stage. But after getting the basics of the face in, it was then time to go and sculpt the hat. So the hat is nothing special. I basically just took half a sphere and then just pulled different parts of it to kind of form more of like a bridge of a hat and stuff like that, just to kind of get the more overarching fit. And then like everything else that I've been doing so far, I then smoothed out the surface of the hat and I really regret this. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, honestly, because I wanted it to be that shape, right? And Basically by doing this, I'm gonna to have to redo the work that I had just erased with the uh, uh, smoothing out. Um, and I'm gonna to have to re-topologize that hat later. And that's just more work for me. So with the cap in place, like I had mentioned earlier, I don't want Chuck's eyes to go over the hat anymore. So with that line of where the hat is gonna be, I just roughed out where his eyes were gonna be. And this line isn't really gonna help with anything except for a guideline for me later during the retopology stage. Now I do have to apologize because unfortunately I somehow lost the footage to this next part where I actually sculpted Chuck's body, but it's basically the same idea. I took one sphere and I just pulled um, different parts out for the arms and the legs, just sculpting out like his belly and making sure that it all worked well into his overall physique. But to finish off the basic sculpt, I quickly gave him some shoes and then I gave him a tail. And it was at this point that I was having some major issues with his hands. Um, I don't know what it is about hands. 
I, I don't think I'm the only one, but they're really hard to model. But for right now, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to cut off his hands and I'll work on them in the future. I always start my retopology with a face right here, just above the lip. And from here, the idea of retopology is to create these bands around the face that connect to other bands at different parts of the face. And you wanna use bigger faces so that you, you can always subdivide faces, but you don't wanna actually like finish the actual like fill in the geometry of the face because that will lead to problems on, later on because you really want to focus on lining things up with that said I didn't do that and I really wish I did because it added a lot of frustration to me when I modeled Chuck's face I did that when I originally retopologized Jumbo but with Chuck I don't know what I was doing <laughs> anyway, so it, it led to some issues primarily around the back of his ear and the back portion of his cheek. Um, and there was just really no good way of working around this. And I'm really just hoping that this isn't going to come back to bite me because I, I just left it as it was. <laughs> so with the face done, I had to go back to the problem that I'd already created, which was the hat, and retopologize the hat. So I had two options when I did this. I could either have gone back and just re-sculpted the hat and just left it with the basic geometry, but I instead chose to just retopologize it because I already liked the shape and I didn't really want to have to go back in and sculpt it again. So going in to retopologize the body, I made it a point this time to use bands and connect those bands before filling in any sections. So next comes the texturing phase. And a lot of you are gonna probably think I texture models really weird, and you're probably right. So the way that I like to texture models, I choose the color palette for the character, and I put them in squares at the top of the image, and then I, I make those pretty short, and then I basically give the whole image to the more defining features of the model. But in Chuck's case, he actually has that number eight on his t-shirt. So you wanna give the most space to that design element because you only have a certain amount of pixels that you can use. And if you have it really, really tiny, it's gonna be really pixelated on the actual model. So you wanna give as much resolution as you can to the, the more important details of the texture. So following that, there was just one more thing to do, and that was Chuck's eyes. Now I'm following the style of like Wind Waker. You know, Wind Waker was cell shaded, and the way that they created his eyes is they actually take the mesh of his eyes and duplicate that area of it, and then just pull it out ever so slightly. And the reason they do this is so they can create, they can use that mesh as a separate object and then they can change on the fly during the game his texture for just that section. And that way they can have him animate a blink or like just have like expression with his eyes. So that's what I did. And I didn't add any expressions yet, but I did add in just his basic eye look. Um, but just know that that's the reason I did that. So the shader I'm using, I didn't create. I just bought it off the asset store. It's a really good cartoon shader. But, you know, just after tweaking a bunch of stuff in the shader properties, Chuck ended up looking, in my opinion, pretty good. But I wanna know what you guys think. Does Chuck look better or does Jumbo look better? Leave a comment, because I would love to hear what you guys think. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and maybe you learned something. And if you could, go and smash that like button. And like I said earlier, if you're not subscribed, subscribe because we're trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the month. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.